Hi, I'm Pat Halpin, and welcome to this special Albany edition of Meet the Leaders. Uh, we've been joined by New York State Assembly from Nassau County, Assemblyman Rob. Uh, this is the start of the, the session for you, and, and I was, I've been thinking a lot about 2019. Uh, look, there have been big changes with the Senate, and it certainly affects Nassau County with the Republicans losing the majority and the Democrats having it. Uh, but there's an aw there are an awful lot of things that are going to be focused on uh, that affect Nassau County and the state that I'd, I'd love to talk to you about. Yep, but, absolutely. But, but, but start with, how do things change with the uh, Democrats and the majority in the Senate? You have several uh, Democrats who were just elected uh, senators in, your, in, uh, in Nassau County uh, who are new. So a couple of, uh, one other who was re-elected, Democrat, uh, John Brooks. How does that dynamic change from your point of view? Well, for, I mean, for me personally, uh, back home, I, I overlap with four of the five Senate districts that cover parts of um, Nassau County. Um, so I have three brand new uh, Senate colleagues. Uh, so who are you know, in the majority? Yes, who are who are in the majority. So um, you know, I I know some of them a little more than others. So uh, you know, I'm looking forward to working with them, obviously. But but on, on a Kind of more global level, uh, it, it obviously um, it changes a lot of the way uh, things are going to function up here, and and the way uh, the way we operate in the assembly. Uh, well, it'll be the same. Um, you know, there were bills that we would take up that kind of didn't have a prayer uh, down the hall. Now it's going to be a very different dynamic. So as you, um, I, I'm thinking to your point that it was the Republican assembly that first proposed the tax cap. Yes. Then the governor embraced it. And a reluctant assembly and Senate uh, passed it. So do you still see, so do you kind of see your role that way as how, how do we do the things, how do, how do we present these important ideas that, uh, you know, that, that perhaps the powers that be uh, are, 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 are not, don't want to take up, but confront them and and, uh, and somehow you know get the attention necessary to make it happen yeah, absolutely there, there's a lot of things that have started with our conference that have made it you know from <laughs> things like the tax cap um, you know the takeover of uh, of increases in Medicaid costs which is which has saved you know millions and millions of dollars to our counties started in our conference By the even way, pension forfeiture every for, county executive should be should be thanking the state legislature for finally doing that yeah and that, and that you know when you said that's that's been a big thing that started in our conference yeah. pension forfeiture when uh, you know elected officials are are convicted uh, of, of crimes uh, you know abusing the public trust started with our conference so we've always been I think a conference of ideas and we're gonna continue to do that uh, along with just you know raising our points uh, on the floor and hopefully uh, making for uh, better pieces of legislation obviously the the numbers aren't going to be there to necessarily um, you know win the vote on the floor but if we raise the right points I think uh, people are gonna have to think twice about different pieces of legislation and, and you know I, I, I see it uh, already uh, in, the, in the time I've been here that you know people will make an amendment I, I think hearing divergent voices makes for better legislation no doubt and, and you and look the conference your conference is going to look at it critically through a very, with a very critical eye, so you, yeah, you always get a better outcome when you have these, this clash of, of ideas, if, as long as both are listening and willing sure. to yeah. take it up. Uh, let, let's talk about some of the big items that have been coming up. Uh, for example, it looks like there's going to be congestion pricing. Uh, what are your thoughts about that? You, you have a district that's right there on the New York City line. There are a lot of people yep. that commute. Uh, take, well, on public transportation, others who drive into Manhattan. Yeah. Well, obviously, there, there's a critical need to find uh, ways to make the investments in in our uh, you know in our infrastructure. There's there's no question about that. Um, and and obviously, for us, you know, the Long Island Railroad yeah, is a big issue. Uh, we've seen so many iterations over the years of, of congestion pricing. Um, I think we're probably at a point that something's uh, coming forward. And you know, I've I've heard from constituents. Uh, both ways on it. I've heard from commuters who say, listen, you know, we, we need something to make those investments. I want reliable uh, public transportation. So, I mean, the devil's going to be uh, uh, in the details on that. But, but I think along with that, when we're looking at something like the MTA, um, I think we, we all want to see the reforms and accountability there, too, to make sure that if we're going to come up with some 
new, uh, you know, shot in the arm in terms of funding that we make sure that the accountability is there so that it's, so that it's being spent the right way. Well, it's actually more than a shot in the arm. You're talking about tens of billions yeah. of dollars over time uh, that's ne that are needed uh, to make the capital investments. Yeah, uh, absolutely. So that's real money. You want to make sure it's spent. Uh, the right way, yeah, and the right things. And you know, you have you know things like east side access and all that uh, coming along, and you know, through the main part of my district, the the third track uh, construction is yeah. is well underway. Um, so you know, we're seeing a lot of investments in that. You know, the, all those stations are basically getting new stations. Um, so there's there's going to be a lot going on. It's going to be a busy time uh, within the MTA and, and the Long Island Railroad. You are the ranking Republican on the Codes Committee. That's the committee that oversees all criminal justice, yes. you know, uh, laws and everything that related to it. Um, it appears that New York State is on the cusp of uh, legalizing marijuana. Uh, there's a lot of discussion about expunging records for people who have been arrested and convicted and in prison uh, for uh, marijuana. Um, what are your thoughts about that? And, and overall criminal justice reform, it's interesting. This is one of the few things that Democrats and Republicans agreed on in the yes. Trump administration was criminal justice reform. Is this the time in New York State to take a hard look at not only uh, marijuana laws, but also others? Sure, so I mean, with the criminal justice reforms, you know, last year it was a little bit of a hot topic, but didn't quite get there. Uh, but things like, just, you know, discovery, speedy trial, um, bail reform, mm -hmm. um, I think there are, there's a lot of uh, things we can learn from what different states have done. Uh, you know, New, New Jersey uh, did a lot of this stuff. So, you know, I've, I've met with groups kind of on both sides of it um, that are raising uh, important points. And, and I hope we will, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of, like you said, common ground on both sides of the aisle what with some of those issues. Uh, the marijuana issue uh, is, is a whole other thing for me. I, I have tremendous concerns uh, uh, with it. Um, uh, in particular with regard to vehicular safety. Um, we need to, you know, there's been a lot of talk about how we're going to spend the, f the revenue that comes in, but, you know, we have to make sure the resources are there for, for local law enforcement. Uh, you know, there's, there's going to be a huge need for dr drug recognition experts, um, so I'd like to see, you know, part, part of that uh, come into the conversation. Because frankly, I, you know, we had a hearing uh, in New York City in October, and there wasn't nearly enough conversation about those things. The whole day was really about, okay, how are we spending uh, all this revenue that's gonna come in? But there's going to be impacts from legalization that we have to focus on uh, as well. So, so I hope we, it looks like it's kind of full speed ahead there, but, but I hope we will uh, you know, take the time to, uh, to do it the right way if, if we're gonna do it. Uh, I've, I heard a lot on the campaign trail this fall from people that have tremendous concerns about it, and, and, I, and I share those concerns. Okay, Assemblyman, it's gonna be an interesting year. It Thank you so sure much is. for being here. Thank you. And Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Thank you so Thank much. You. That's gonna do it for this edition of Meet the Leaders. I'm Pat Halpin. We'll see you again.